Dr. S. Ramesh to deliver his address. Okay. So we are waiting to hear from you. Very good morning, everybody. Esteemed uh, chairman of the educational group, Honorable Secretary, learned principal, members of the faculty, participants from different parts of the country, and my student friends. It's really been a pleasure to be here, and especially when Dr. Sridhar Shetty, who is the principal of the college, told me that I need to kind of be a keynote speaker. I told him it's really a pleasure to associate myself with any academic activity. Anyway, uh, friends, that you know, I'm very, I must really congratulate the college for choosing the right theme of the conference. And uh, I'm sure that you know, the deliberations will certainly kind of be very, very useful to a lot more at least people in different walks of life. So I must congratulate the college for this and also first basically thank the college for inviting me. So the, I thought maybe that you know I could spend some time on what are the emerging trends, not only merely from the point of view of the COVID, but general trends that are happening in the business because COVID is a very short-term phenomenon uh, which will not really make a very significant kind of change when you compare it for about 10 years of change that have taken place and then what's going to be for another 10 years. So friends, you know that, you know, if you look at, so unprecedented changes have taken place in the business economy and different sectors of the globe. If you look at, we are in fact working, as even Dr. Sridhar Shetty, Sridhar Shetty said it, that we are working in a confusion, chaos, and uncertainty. As this is a result of several factors, not merely the COVID, that there's a new technology, we have new markets, new values, and new policies. <laughs> it's a very significant change that have taken place in these at least. And we, are, we have a choice either to kind of you know, take hold of the future or the future will take hold of us. So friends, I thought maybe I'd discuss with you that what are the trends that are really kind of you know, taking place in the business environment today? Then I'll move on to the IT and maybe the media. Friends, competition is the buzzword today. In fact, if you look at many at least industries Many organizations, many enterprises, they don't even kind of last long for more than two, three years. Even the products for that matter of the best of the companies do not kind of stay on in the market for several years. It's because the competition is so cutthroat today. You take for example, that no, we are talking about the channels for that matter, the TV channels. In fact, at one point of time, we had only one channel, the Doodarshan channel, where we had to wait till evening at five o'clock to watch a program. Today, you have thousands of channels. You take, for instance, Nokia, which was a very, very popular mobile phone, which, was, which had almost 80% market share. Then the, you don't see the Nokia phone today and the Samsung took over. So friends today, until and unless you have a competitive advantage, that you are really sent out of the market. So competition is the buzzword today, until and unless that we are distinctly different in terms of product or the service or something or the other, that we don't stay in the market. Even the technology there is, you find that there is so much of changes taking place in the technology. I would like to say there's a technology disruption. First, it seems in fact, now take for instance that in the United States, they have developed a refrigerator where actually, let us say in the refrigerator, you have stored some potatoes. So you have stored some five kgs of potatoes and you have you been using that and the stock level has come to two kgs. And maybe within a week that no, all the stock will get over. But there's a sensor inside the refrigerator. As soon as the stock level comes to about two kgs, it places an order through the internet technology, sending a mail to the potato supplier to supply the potatoes. 
So the very next morning, the potato supplier would be there with the potatoes in your doors without you knowing there's a shortage of potatoes in your refrigerator. So kind of technology that is mind boggling, even there's a te technology called a cyber night where a patient is sleeping in maybe let's say Breed Candy Hospital in Mumbai. The surgeon is sitting in California. He's performing the heart operation from California on a patient who is sleeping in Mumbai. You can imagine the kind of technology, it's so mind boggling. Uh, for instance, there is a China, they invented a train which never stops. In the sense, it keeps on kind of you not know, really moving. But when you ask me a question as to how people board the train or get out from the train, it seems this train, as soon as that you know, it, is, it is approaching a station, all the at least you know, passengers were to kind of you know, deboard the train or detrain, will have to come to one compartment. And this compartment will be left in fraction of a second by this train as soon as the train at least approaches the station and it is that particular compartment is detrained and it keeps on moving. And you may ask me how the people board the train. All those who have to board the train will have to kind of get into a compartment which is stationed in the railway station. And then as soon as this train arrives, it picks up this, at least, you know, this bogey in no time and keeps moving. So maybe tremendous kind of you know, things are happening in the case of kind of you know, technology that even uh, when we talk about the information technology, we'll see a lot more changes. And the third thing, friends, that's happening is the growing consumer awareness. In fact, consumer has become the king of the market. The seller's market is gone today. Today we have what is known as a buyer's market where the buyer is going to dictate the terms. Until and unless you understand the pulse of a consumer, you don't kind of you know, survive in the market for very long. It seems one lady went to Mac fast food centers and generally this Mac fast food center serve very hot coffee. She wanted to buy a cup of coffee. She bought a cup of coffee. She could not hold on to that. It fell on her legs and she suffered some minor burns. The shopkeeper said, I'm sorry. And she went away. Next day, she filed a suit for half a billion dollar compensation for a small injury. Her contention was the cup did not contain an instruction that this cup, and cup contains a very hot beverage and the consumer must be careful. The court upheld the contention and she was given a part of compensation. May probably a very highest price where Mac for fast food centers would have paid for a cup of coffee. So now you find in any Mac fast food centers, invariably the cup contains an instruction, consumer must be careful, this contains a very, very hot beverage. So friends, if we look at, so consumer is becoming kind of more and more kind of you know, competent and competitive today. And another approach to management, what's happening as far the management is concerned, everything is becoming uncertain as I told you. So therefore, the systems approach to management is gone today, where there is a systematic thinking, planning and delivery and things like that, this is gone today. So it's more a contingent approach and managing crisis is become the buzzword everywhere. You saw the pandemic, in fact, that we had no other choice but to manage the crisis in different walks of life. So as students of management, my young friends, I must tell you, if you know the art of managing crisis, you become the greatest manager. To give you how you can manage a crisis, I would like to quote this anecdote. It seems Albert Einstein, who came to fame, went around several, at least, you know, universities to give lectures. He was on his way to Brussels University and he wanted to speak something on maybe that relativity theory. But on the way, he forgot what he had to speak. His mind went blank and he told his driver, today, let's go back because I'm not in the right frame of mind to speak. Driver said, sir, don't worry. I will be the Einstein. I will speak, give the lecture today. Since I'm sitting in the last bench and listening, I'll give the lecture today. You be my driver. Both of them agreed, both of them went there, and then this driver could give best of the lectures that he could, uh, even much better than Einstein could do. But at the end of the, at least in the lecture, one of the scholars asked him a very, very small question. He knows only to give the lecture, but he doesn't know how to give the lecture, how to answer the question. Look at his sense of crisis management. He said, it is such a silly question you're asking, which my driver will be able to answer, and he brought Einstein to answer this question. So friends, what I'm trying to say is, 
there is a need for you to understand and manage a crisis driven situation it's only possible when you have a presence of mind another thing that's happening today in the business world today is different differing levels of ethics that means ethics has really gone to the bottom that means you know uh, people do anything and everything for that matter in order to kind of you know ensure that really they make profits in the business so friends you know there i today you find as far as the consumers are concerned the traditional segmenting of customers is gone today earlier we used to segment the customers based on some maybe that you know income age and various other kind of you know parameters but today you have these kinds of customers you find either a rat type or a cat type or a dog type jack or a fish so what are these dog let's say so actually as far as the dog type are concerned they are very very loyal at least customers irrespective of what happens in the market they don't change the brand for instance you take the toothpaste a colgate brand people don't, don't switch over or a times newspaper they, they don't switch over or a wins filter cigarette so brand conscious they never move into any other brand at all so there are discount customers that mean they are jack as a very cunning jack itself they buy only when there are discounts like say amazon sale brand factory big bazaar wherever there is a discount sale they buy otherwise they don't buy at all very impulsive customers these people are like a fish which is very impulsive they buy only when their impulses are kind of you no know, really challenged and that means friends take for instance amol came out with the chocolates they at least their positioning strategy was a gift for someone you love it's a very impulsive kind of statement everybody started buying amul chocolates to give it to their own kind of loved ones so this is very impulsive buy no reason no rhyme ultimately you buy that so there are need based customers like the cat does it eats only or consumes milk only when it is absolutely required in the case of education products it happens and the last type is a wandering the rat it like the rat they jump from one place to another one place to another this happens in the case of cosmetics industry i mean even in the case of maybe most of these malls we are talking about people in fact 70% of consumers don't buy anything who are really kind of present in the malls only 30% buy other 70% they come for some entertainment maybe kind of spending some time and things like that so they are called as wandering customers they want kind of only they buy very rarely keep on wandering only when something very very interesting they buy as well don't don't that's why in fact wadilal comes out with seven or eight different flavors every week it's the same of course but then it will it will ensure that at least people get attracted friends what's happening new products to a kind of you know product differentiation i think that's happening in business that means all these years we had only a white toothpaste for that matter but very that is it's only recently that you know maybe that the close up and others came out with blue color pink color toothpaste and they thought that a different toothpaste can be different different when the colgate came, sorry close up came out with this color toothpaste colgate lost its market by 60% then it came out with easy to squeeze, squeeze tubes and various other strategies to come back to market and another thing that's happening is service extension to service precision today precision is what really kind of people are looking at offering instead of offering different services in the service industry offer a very few service quality service you know i want to give you this example of dabba walas in mumbai itself even during covid when at least the business for this dabba walas went up almost by 50% more they never committed even kind of no point one one point uh, kind of no error they are there they don't know any six sigma or anything but yet they ensure that there is a quality even their delivery so that's another thing so competitive advantage to customer advantage so today that you know we have to kind of provide certain kind of an advantage to a customer over all other product why the customer must come to us is because you know we are uniquely or distinctly different this happened in the case of you know kinetic actually that you know bajaj who are global leaders in the at least you know scooter industry today they are closed they don't produce scooters at all kinetic came in where they thought that for a lady there is a need for a centrally bonded engine no gear shifting self starting they came out with a maybe vehicle which is so simple for a lady to drive bajaj went out of the market we talk about ambassador ambassador went out of the market any at least people were during this maybe 10 years plus period you find that there is a massive change even in the auto industry 
Uh, and another change that you see is competition to cooperation, especially during these COVID times, that there is competition, the word is gone. Today, the buzzword is cooperation. Even among the competitors, there is some kind of a cooperation. They unite together to ensure that they get a price. This happens in the case of Burma Bazaar and other places where they say that below this price, we will not sell the product to any consumer at all. Some kind of a pooling interest that come in. Product to customer life cycle. Let's like say McDonald's and others. McDonald's basically they produce, you know, they sell some burgers and pizza and things like that. But they never sell any kind of rice or anything in their kind of you know, restaurants. But as a result of at least, you know, this consumer need, even some parts of Tamil Nadu, they started to kind of, you know, serving even a rice along with the, the bread meal and things like that. So you had to do be very customer centric. From felt needs to latent needs. Today, you feel it's not enough that you only provide the felt needs of a customer, but you need to provide even the latent needs, even during COVID. Domino's pizza, when they were serving pizza, they were not merely carrying a pizza to serve, they were carrying the sanitizers and various other things connected with the COVID, at least, you know, sanitization, and also a bottle of water and many more things, garlic pills, and so many things, so that the customer, even the unknown needs of the customers are served. So selling product concept. So today concept selling has become the buzzword is of merely kind of you know, selling the product. And product innovation is another issue which is most important. It's not merely that you produce a new product, but there is a need for you to kind of you know, uh, see that how this product will have different functions and different uses for the product. This happened in the case of Godrej. What happened, Godrej, when they brought hair dye into the market, they thought it's only the kind of urban people who will buy the hair dye. To their surprise, a lot of rural people were buy buying the hair dye. When they conducted survey, the survey revealed that it seems the these rural people were using this Godrej hair dye to dye their buffaloes to fetch a better price. So then Godrej realized that you know, this hair dye can need not be used only for maybe the human beings, also maybe for other animals and so many other things. So that, that's the kind of, you know, in a way you have to look at what other things that your product really needs to kind of you know, be used for. So friends, a lot more things are happening. It's the age of creative destruction. That is, you know, Microsoft destroys its own product to bring in new product, like say Windows, that, you know, different versions come in and they cannibalize their own kind of products. Product life cycle is shrinking. Use and throw products are being in demand today. Micro demographic shift in buying. A small car by even the richest people buy small cars, parking problems, various other things. So globalization is another thing, which is the order of the day. Even global companies come in to the Indian market, they ensure that they also add some local flavor in order to ensure that they are in the market. And cost cutting through outsourcing, Outsourcing is not of the day. That's a trend management trend today. You find that even Nike, Reebok, and all of them, they have kind of, you know, maybe production centers even in the country, in the industrial areas, and it's only the label that they put and try to kind of market these products here. So digital marketing and data mining, Walmart uses this very efficiently. In fact, Walmart fixes its prices every one hour they change their pricing strategy. It is because they're able to get the data from across the globe as to what consumers want at a particular point of time. So they're able to kind of you know, fix certain kind of price from target costing to one-to-one -one pricing. So today, though maybe that mass bargaining is blown. So one-to-one -one pricing, even a consumer can bargain individually and get a better price, especially during this COVID-19 and other times. Profits to brand building, even during this COVID, Detail, although they did not have the supply, they did not have even the product to supply, but yet they were continuing with the advertisement. And people were not getting this product in the shop, but yet they continue to advertise because they know once they stop advertising, people will forget about the product. So profits to brand building is one more thing that's happening. So friends, that there are many more changes that are happening in the business world, but since want of time that now we move on to what are the changes that have taken place in the information technology sector. One very important significant thing that continues to kind of be a new technology is the artificial intelligence. In fact, can you talk about unmanned drones? Can you talk about self-driving cars without drivers, spam filters, robots working in restaurants and other things? 
and facial recognition techniques. So this artificial intelligence as a technology is being widely used. This is one of the trends that's happening. Second thing that's happening in the IT is about the quantum computing. It takes advantage of the quantum physics. And if, for instance, to give an example of what quantum computing is, if there are 100 cars in a toll, and every time that one, one car has to move, it takes hundreds of minutes to kind of move all the cars out of the toll. So whereas this quantum computing, please mind you, the technology is built in so much that all these summits, maybe 100 and 200 cars can be scanned in no time, and in just one or two minutes, it can be clear. So that's a kind of you know, technology that we are kind of talking about. In fact, this technology was also used in preventing the spread of coronavirus and also for developing potential vaccines for COVID-19. And the third thing that's happening is the robotic process automation. In a robotic process automation, what happens is manager decision-making is automated. So you don't need really managers to make decisions. The computer makes the decision if you feed in the required data, it comes out with the manager decision. This is another thing that's really mind-boggling technology that is coming. Edge computing. In fact, the cloud was the kind of latest version, but cloud also has its own limitations because the data has to go to the server in the cloud and again come back in order to make decisions. But in edge computing, it's not so. And maybe that the site itself, solutions are available so that the time of kind of sending the data to the cloud and getting the answers back is saved in edge computing and it saves time and also the time at least taken by the cloud is minimized here. And it has its application in banking, finance, and maybe the high frequency trading and fraud detection. These are some of the areas where it is, where it is used. Uh, friends, another thing that's happening in the IT world is the virtual reality and augmented reality. You say VR and AR. In fact, in the case of uh, these two are used, especially in the case of gaming and for instance, uh, for virtual, you know, for instance, you want to develop a mock stock exchange in the college, possible. And you want to at least show a visual kind of ship, a simulate a ship and show how it really looks. So a very virtual kind of you know, environment is created in this technology. It is generally used in the case of you know, maybe training. It was used in the case of this software was used in training the US Navy and Army. And even, for instance, you want to teach the doctors as to how to kind of operate on a patient, this technology kind of is also being kind of used. Blockchain, not to leave out, of course, becoming a very increasingly used technology. And it's a very special character of this blockchain is data you can only add. Of course, you, know, you cannot kind of you know, eliminate anything. So very, very security proof this data becomes. Hence the term chain because not being able to change the previous blocks is what really makes this secure. So it's a very secure mode of, it's used in Bitcoins and various other kind of you know, uh, issues. The, and seventh one is the internet of the things. So this is another technology which really kind of being very extensively kind of going to be used. For instance, let us say there's going to be a lockdown. There's going to be a lockdown as a result of the COVID or something increase in COVID. As soon as there's going to be a lockdown, uh, I mean, you're, you're, let us say you're driving the car and you're kind of know maybe that you know your screen, small TV screen is going to show, please fill the petrol because there's going to be a lockdown tomorrow. And again, there's going to be kind of, you know, this information is passed on to kind of, you know, everybody with whom you are collected. Maybe the driver need not come. Or for instance, the wife gets a message that, no, you don't have to kind of cook for tomorrow. So at least it's all interconnected. You get kind of solutions in no time. So internet, and also let us say that you want to kind of put on your oven, even much before you go home, you're driving outside on a national highway and you, uh, by the time you uh, go home, your ovens must be switched on. It's going to do that. Or maybe that, you know, you want to lock your doors remotely. If you're somewhere else, you forgot to lock your doors, remote locking of your doors is possible. So, a lot more things. How you want to put on a water motor? It is possible from any part of, you know, the globe. So, and the next kind of next generation technology that's happening is the 5G. Of course, you know, the spider, in fact, it is said, the speed of 5G is 70 times faster as compared to 4G. So you can imagine, it's really mind boggling as to how it's going to, going to happen and change the way we're going to kind of look at technology. 
and cyber security is also increasingly a really a concern as the technology improving at the same time hacking and, and recently as you saw that even prime minister's twitter really being hacked you can imagine the kind of you no know, security that's required so cyber security also becomes a great uh, kind of you know uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the kind of technology that you now we need to look at so friends having said little about the it there are many more changes for want of time that i'm cutting short so trends in media also that even the trends in media is mobile video is marketing is another thing so today uh, the te traditional television kind of you no know, video is gone so today we are talking about the video and uh, mobile games and so many things that are coming up and data analytics kind of gives you the media who is looking at your ad how many people are looking when are they looking what is it they like what they don't like all this you know data analytics gives you some solutions and even that uh, they are also uh, media is also using virtual and augmented reality to design their own ads and even the rise of social media is another thing that's happening in media world that because you know the twitter facebook and various things you can spread what you really feel about any issues in no point of time to mass at least people but however spreads important issues persuades others also but towards your cause and but however it's very important here you should know what to speak and what not to speak is the thing then social media scrutiny but however even the facebook twitter and all of them are under very close scrutiny because there are a lot of controversy that really uh, came up very recently about these people and then even forensic journals in another thing that's how you know, we are taking really a front seat today in the thing because especially the investigative journalism is really kind of you know coming up in a very big way uh you saw that lot of scams and lot of kind of people refer to ed it's all because of the kind of the forensic journalism itself even the the power of influence there are some influencers okay, opinion makers who can change or make or mark the product's life or an individual's life about their opinion about a product or a person so that's also kind of getting some kind of a boost and even uh the people are becoming with very creative ads that's another thing that's happening in fact i really like the fevic quick ad so kind of creative created show so these kind of ads are also kind of becoming very creative content is becoming india is really developing a lot of creative content as compared to even kind of you know, other kind of media and any time news is another concept any time you switch on tv the same news is being repeated and repeated and so any time that you want any kind of news it's easily kind of you know, available so friends now having said about little trends about both covid and also during the current times so i thought maybe post covid that what's going to be the scenario that the economy in fact is stated to grow at 9% and because it because people with those excessive savings which had they had during the covid are going to spend now this spending will kind of you know create an investment and government spending added to private investments will kind of boost the economy and it will increase the employment and laborers who migrated from kind of city to kind of rural places will come back again and the agriculture will also take some kind of a boost especially tourism hotel tele uh, kind of you no know, telecommunication health retailing these industries will kind of have some kind of a good time and online presence to survive becomes most essential and they will improve the efficiency productivity and the labor and telecommunicating and e-commerce will really go in a very bigger way and hybrid workplaces work from home and kind of moonlighting and kind of you know uh, these are some of the kind of you know things that are going to happen as a result of which kind of there going to be business expansion and so uh, however these measures that you really need and the challenge that you face is how to develop a good infrastructure for coming back to the business and startup india is another kind of initiative of the government make in india concept so that you grow in india and so that you don't have to import and kind of avoid the import duties and banks and finance institutions will have to reach out by giving loans and advances to people encourage the insurance sector because health insurance especially is gaining more momentum that's going to be the in thing improve the quality and the brand india will have to improve if you have to kind of uh, concentrate on exports and export more and promote innovative products and traditional products and promote health tourism in a bigger way there's a lot of revenue going to come through the remote and, and subsidies from the government and administered pricing and buybacks will also kind of put business on track and low and no interest loans probably government can think of 
and working capital to provide some liquidity and ease of doing the business. The government should kind of have some single window clearance for permissions and uh, you have to attract more FDIs, provide some tax concessions and a tax holiday for one or two years, then the business will pick up and that will revive consumption, which will ultimately spur the economic growth. So friends, that the, there's the macro level. In the micro level, uh, what organizations must do is, either you should have an innovation model or a gay model or a bar model. In the innovation model, you should innovate a product which nobody can kind of know, imitate, and which will remain in the market for a very long period of time. Like say, you talk about locks, you talk about Nautal. You talk about glasses, you talk about Ray-Ban. Or you have a distribution strategy, the supply chain especially must kind of improve. You talk about Bata. If they don't uh, kind of sell footwear, during COVID, they were selling something else even in their, all their outlets to kind of still maintain some income. Concept selling, maybe that uh, and even kind of packing. The chick shampoo, one rupee, they brought small sachets. They made kind of huge business. And only then the shampoo business really kind of spread to even rural areas too. Or you should have a game model. That means if you cannot beat, you better join them. That's kind of the game model. So mergers and acquisitions, in fact, Baiju's bought the Akash, which is a very kind of business, with small time, at least an you know, organization, bought the huge Akash and things like that. So this kind of mergers will also be thing. And a war model, that means you should be cash rich in order to fight a war. What happened in the case of Modi Xerox, when they came to market, everywhere they bought all the other old Xerox machines of different bands, everywhere they put Modi Xerox, Modi Xerox, that's the way Modi Xerox took off. On a survival model, if this happens in the case of Tata's or maybe the two, maybe TBS uh, group of companies where they don't do anything, irrespective of whether COVID, no COVID, they do the same thing. They know that they're going to back to be in the business for of some time. So, Jita Hai India is the thing. And then I would like to kind of, you must read this, what uh, you know, uh, our kind of you know, great Ratan Tata said. He said, experts are predict huge down for fall in the economy. I do not know much about these experts, but I know for sure that they do not know anything about the value of human motivation and determination efforts. If experts were to be believed, of the total destruction in Second World War, Japan had no future, but the same Japan just in three decades or so made the US cry in the market. If experts to believe, Israel should have been wiped out of from the world map by the Arabs, but the fact is not so. So aerodynamics, the bubble B as cannot fly, but it flies. If the experts were to believe, we should have at least been in the way the World Cup in 83, we would not have won the World Cup at all for the first time. So then you could have, if the experts were to believe, Wilma Rodolph, the first American lady to win four Olympic gold in athletics should not have been in a position to walk without braces. No question of running. If the experts would believe, uh, Arumina Sinha can hardly lead a normal life, but she climbed the Mount Everest. The corona crisis is no different. I do not have any doubt that we will defeat the corona hands down and the Indian economy will bounce back to great abandon. Hey, friends, what really uh, the eminent man says is true. All that is India is going to be a superpower in the years to come. Uh, because if you look at 20% of the software professionals in the United States are Indians. 22% of the medical professionals are Indians. 35% of NASA's workforce is Indian. 30% of G employees are Indians. You can go on naming. They have done exceedingly well in the global space, but it's time for us to kind of have reverse brain drain. People come back and build the country. I'm sure that we're going to do that. So I thank the organizers for giving this good opportunity for me to share some at least no thoughts with you. And I thank Dr. Sida Shetty and also uh, Ms. Nidhi, who was constantly in touch with me to ensure that I'm here today. So I thank both of them and uh, the members of management and all the participants. Wish you all the best and please do take care because, you know, of course, COVID is still not over. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. S. Ramesh, sir, I am mouth stroke with your content, sir. As my sincere gratitude for your elaborate address and carefully analyzing every minute development in the field of media, technology, and management. In the way our living and livelihood both are affected in this digitally driven, compelled new normal scenario that is leading us to the port COVID expectations. And um, 